Hello everybody, I am Chibi Joe, and today we are reading Volume 2 of the Biography of Baron Zaya. Now last week where we left off was her going to Riften with the farmer boy, with the stable boy, Straw, as he lied to her and they went off on their own. So let's see where it goes. The first volume of this series told the story of Baron Zaya's origin heiress to the throne of Mornhold until her father rebelled against His Excellency Tiber Septim and brought ruin to the province of Morrowind. Thanks largely to the benevolence of the Emperor, the child Baron Zaya was not destroyed with her parents, but reared by Count Sven of Darkmoor, a loyal imperial trustee. She grew up into a beautiful and pious child, trustful of her guardian's care. This trust, however, was exploited by a wicked orphan stable boy at Count Sven's estate, who, with lies and fabrications, tricked her into fleeing Darkmoor with him when she turned 16. After many adventures on the road, they settled in Riften, a Skyrim city near the Morrowind borders. The stable boy, Straw, was not altogether evil. He loved Baron Zaya in his own selfish fashion, and deception was the only way he could think of that would submit possession of her. She, of course, felt only friendship toward him, but he was hopeful that she would gradually change her mind he wanted to buy a small farm and settle down into a comfortable marriage. But at the time, his earnings were barely enough to feed and shelter them. After only a short time in Riften, Straw fell in with a bold, villainous Khajiit thief named Theris, who proposed that they rob the Imperial Commandant's house in the central part of the city. Theris said that he had a client, a traitor to the Empire, who would pay well for any information they could gather there. Baron Zaya happened to overhear this plan and was appalled. She stole away from their rooms and walked the streets of Riften in desperation, torn between her loyalty to the Empire and her love for her friends. In the end, the loyalty to the Empire prevailed over her personal friendship, and she approached the Commandant's house, revealed her true identity, and warned him of her friends' plans. The Commandant listened to her tale, praised her courage, and assured her that no harm would come to her. He was none other than General Samakis, who had been scurrying the countryside in search of her since her disappearance, and had just arrived in Riften, hot in pursuit. He took her into his custody and informed her that, far from being sent away to be sold, she was to be reinstated as the Queen of Mornhold as soon as she turned 18. Until that time, she was to live with the Septim family in the newly built Imperial City, where she would learn something of government and be presented at the Imperial Court. At the Imperial City, Baron Zaya befriended the Emperor Tiber Septim during the middle years of his reign. Tiber's children, particularly his eldest son and heir, Plagueis, came to love her as a sister. The ballads of the day praised her beauty, chastity, wit, and learning. On her 18th birthday, the entire Imperial City turned out to watch her farewell procession preliminary to her return to her native land. Sorrowful as they were of her at her departure, all knew she was ready for her glorious destiny as sovereign of the kingdom of Mornhold. That was volume two of the biography of Baron Zaya. I liked this. I, I, I'm liking this so far. I'm looking forward to reading the others. I think there's like six. So that's fun. Ah, there's only three that was written by the time of of Daggerfall. So we'll have to wait until the later uh, games to continue the biography of Baron Zaya. Next will be Bothorji Scroll. Nobody knows who wrote it. It's a mysterious text mentioning Oblivion and its minions. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have an awesome day and a good night.